Hello there YouTube. We're redoing this old antenna. Two meter ham antenna, Ringo Ranger, actually a dual band. It's went through a lot of storms. It was on the house for years. It's been shoved up in the top of the big shed. And here's how I clean those. Here's the before. And this went in here. You had stainless stainless screws, and then your phasing stub went in here. You could see how I held the picture. Your phasing stub went in here. Well, somebody had played with it over and over. I hope I have the right directions. I've searched online once, and there's several models of these where this is all chewed up, where the screws have been in here over and over. I'm going to put it in a the best side. You can tell it's been in and out and screwed on both sides before. I used a rough type emery paper to get all the big gouges off so it will slide through them holes of this. So I've really been doing a lot of work on that because you could not even slide it in and out. I had to push it this way through the plastic, clean off the holes, then drag it back through. So I had to shove it in where it was clean. Okay. Then I used like a 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. Use plenty of water. Put a couple drops of soap in it. Even if the water gets dirty, it'll still help lift the junk. And I cleaned all this up. So it looks like this. That's pretty clean. And on the inside, because there's a piece goes inside of here where it's slotted. I know it's almost impossible to look down in there. This camera. I rolled up the 400 grit and spun it in a circle in and out with water. I used water because these pieces will all be dried, rinsed in clear water even if I have to use the garden hose. And like this end, now it's all clean. Then what I do is, also with water, I only have some 3-0 steel wool. Use 3-0 or 4-0. And scrubbed and scrubbed this. I had this sitting down on my desk in front of me. I'm, I've scrubbed this for enough to polish. I want to polish it again. I have tried clear acrylic on aluminum when I'm done cleaning old stuff. It just yellows out in the sun. Any clear lacquer or acrylic. So it's just going to go back up clean the first time. But definite improvement over this. Just like the very bottom. Bear with me, let me hit it. This wall will be redone. I'll put new screws where they have to go, even if they're not stainless. At least they'll be zinc coated. It's pretty bad. Even the threads are messed up. I cannot find a piece like this. So I'm going to clean these threads up with a wire brush, a brass bristled brush, and I'll still use soap and water to help lift all the scrunge up. I have a way I'll show in the end how I got this over end of a swag pipe and I just put a screw in it because this had a bolt and a nut. See how it's in it for the nut to fit there? I just put it on a piece of aluminum pipe that's swagged, which means it gets tapered smaller. And that's how I've used it. It does have a bend in it. If you can see it. I may attempt to take some of that bend out. It's leaning this way. I may attempt to take some of that out. What I'll do is I'll take a ball peen hammer and I'll slowly roll around it and tap this, not to crush it, and get it straight again. But it's a mess. How you tune these is you move the little rod back and forth. But you can go online and find these antennas. They're made by Chris Craft. You can find the manual, the paperwork. That's how I did it years ago. I've got the paperwork and I hope it's for the right model number. But so much for this part of the video. I'll show the bottom cleaned up when I'm done and maybe a couple other sections how I clean them up. Because you want this clean. If you're going to have aluminum going inside there, the same as electrical contact, this must be clean. And that's one way I do it. I just roll the wet dry sandpaper and I scrub that in there. If you, you could try steel wool on a stick or something, I prefer sandpaper. It cleans it up. 
That's how I'm going to do it. But that way it will be electrically, all the connections, the same as electricity, will be clean. The same as if you're using an electrical connection. you got to have all that stuff clean on there. But it's a mess. That's why I thought I'd show up before I got done. It is a scrunchy mess. You can see how them threads are. It took a vice grip just to get the connector off. It had been up on the house so many years. Last year we had the house re roof And the SWRs went up so bad that it was out of tune. It could have been used as an emergency. I would never have been scared of using that because I wouldn't have worried about that. It was still in the safe zone to use. But I'm sure it didn't transmit very good or receive very good as corroded as it was. Enough for this part. This may be a several part video because I don't want it to be too long. Okay. I took the bolt and nut out of here. With the nut falls inside the pipe, I'll show you how I get that back in there. This piece I'm going to take off, replace that bolt. I'll show how I get that back in there. How to get the bolt up inside of the pipe to get the nut on it. Because I've done it before, that's why this is rusted. I didn't have a stainless bolt, it was just zinc plated. I don't remember if this comes out of here. I may, it is got a punch in there. I may drill this out and try to disassemble this because I want to straighten this pipe. It is crooked. If I roll around, you'll see where it's bent. See where the top leans, leans to the left. But we're going to cut this with a Dremel, a Dremel blade. We're going to cut the bolt because it's spinning. We're going to cut through the nut in the bolt and get this out of here. So that's how this is coming out. If you were careful, you can put a bunch of tape around here so you don't hit it. You can use a cutter blade on a like four and a half inch grinder or something, but I'm gonna do it with a small Dremel so I can do it setting at the desk. But I may drill this dimple out and take this apart. If if it will come apart, that's what I'm gonna do. Because I want to straighten this piece on the bottom. You can see where it's been hammered, bent. It was probably bent in the storm and somebody took a hammer to it to try to straighten it. Okay. Back. Okay, we got this bottom part all cleaned up and got it all out. I just wanted to show this. This is why I drilled it out where there was a dimple, which I assume they dimpled it to hold it on here, even though there's a bolt. Well, it wasn't on there very far, the dimple. If I put this on here, the dimple was at the edge of the plastic, whatever this stuff is. This is a plastic that almost looks like it's spun. I know there's a name for it. I put some Sharpie marker on there. The reason I wanted to take this apart, there were several reasons. Work on this a little bit better. I thought maybe I could get a rod up there and straighten that. And all the dirt and grease on here, because this is the hot side, this is the ground side. Well, you get that all wet, it could ground out your signal. I believe it could. But I'm going to put some sealer on here. It won't be epoxy or nothing. It'll be just like a contact a piece of the sealer. A little bit better than silicone would be, just in case it needs to be worked on one more time. I don't know if I'm going to redimple it. Let me get the right end on here. I don't know if I'm going to redimple this up a little further. I may put a little couple dimples in it. Take a center punch and grind your tip off so it's not sharp. You're making a dimple, you're not making a hole. Self-explanatory. So I'd show that. This may be a several part video, but it's nice and clean. Being this was all powdery and after I was done scrubbing it, I didn't want to use no paint. Paint can be conductive. I just used some Sharpie marker. That way maybe it'll seal it. Because the stuff is kind of porous. The more I ground out, the more powdery it was. But off back to work. Then I'll be showing how I get the bolt up inside of here. Two of them. Has to be a screw here and a bolt here. I'll be showing how that works. Okay. I wadded up some masking tape and stuck in that hole. Because we're going to put the sealer on there and put the piece back on there. 
thought I'd add that real quick. That way I'll just poke the masking tape out of the way. Okay. Back to work. Okay, we're going to have to put this screw in on camera. This is just lightweight copper wire. We're going down to this hole. I'm going to have to get off camera here for a second. And there it is. Hold on to it. And then you just yank your wire out. I'll get a nut on there to hold that. Same way when I do the bigger one, which will be a shorter distance. But you've seen how I did that there. It's real easy. You can use any kind of wire. I use real flimsy wire. That's what I had laying around. You got desperate enough to use a big piece of solder or soldering wire or something. But the other bolt was stainless, but it's so corroded and old, we're going with a new zinc plated. Okay, we got this on here. We've got a Star Washer underneath this bracket and one underneath the nut. So we know we have a good contact with this piece again too, which is the hot side, the antenna side. Here we get back there. Been a pretty grungy job. No matter how many times you wash your hands, the aluminum when you scrub it, it gets all gray black. This has been sealed. I did clean the sealer off to make it look better. There's some permanent mark around there just to make it look good. And maybe it'll help seal this plastic. It is kind of porous so I have to use sand on it. This bolt I'm going to take maybe a painted bolt that's coated. But the head's too big. I have to take it down to like 5 sixteenths. Because there's a it has to fit through the hole of the plastic. Because the bevel goes here, you can see how it's beveled. But I have to clear the hole in here, and it's 5 16. I just merit my head. It would be good if I wrote it down in case you forget. So, in act actuality, big words, don't use big words. Nothing holds this antenna together in here except the glue and the dimple. Because this makes well, it may hold it from pulling out because it goes to the hole, but it doesn't hold it solid. The bolts and the plastic, goes in. it keeps it from pulling off, but it doesn't keep it from wobbling. So I made dimple it a couple places because it was loose. It did wobble. And now it has sealer. I did trim it off. It's not going to get a whole lot of water down inside of there. Just like the top of the antenna will be sealed. I don't want water running down the inside. Okay. Okay, the progress so far. Under here I have a star washer, so it contacts here and here. I've got sealer over here in the bolt, because it's not a stainless bolt, and it was like a black painted. I've got a little star washer on this nut. This is stainless right here, so I'm glad this is stainless. These are just zinc bolts. If I do have a star washer between this ring and the bracket, same as down here, between the ring and the bracket, then one under the nut. Here, I modified it a little bit. There's a nut in this U-clamp, and you tighten the bolt, so it tightens this on here, so this rod is tightened wherever you set it. I put a nut out here, which when I'm done tuning, I will tighten that down. To me, that'll be a lot more solder than just that nut and the screw, because I had problems with that before coming loose, not being tight. And... You would check your SWRs on a windy day, and it would sit there, and I went, on a windy day one time, what was wrong? This screw had came loose. So we're trying to solve that problem. But I'm not out of anything. I've had this almost 12 years. Got my hand lights beginning of 2000, beginning of the millennium. And it was up on the house since until last year. So I'm not out of anything that was given to me given to me because someone couldn't get it to tune. Well, I hope I had the right directions off the internet because I'm just going by the picture of it and what dimensions it looks like because there's several models of these. One model has a piece that goes in there looks like, like a piece of coaxial cable with another bracket. It's not that one. So there's different models of these. Spin it around here so you can get a good view. 
Remember, you can see where I added that extra nut on the bottom so I can tighten it up against there. Sealer, even on the top of this bracket here, so rain can't run down behind it. But there is a nice big Star Wars in there. Being the bolt wasn't making much contact, it was plated. I'm making sure there's contact between this and this, the ground side. I cleaned all this up. I have a connector I kept threading on there. I could not get this to move, so I'm lucky that this is the right length. It's where it was before, so I wasn't afraid it was wrong. But the way it was messed with, and this had been chomped on with the vice grips, that it went through a rough life. Somebody did try their hardest to tune this thing. As many marks as underneath this ring, you could see them chew marks and screws. Someone went a lot of time trying to get this to tune, and it's probably because the length was off on the top. So I hope I have the right dimensions for that. I'll be testing it out in the yard so I can take it down and adjust it. It'll be like clamped in my vise up far enough so I can sit there and tune it before I put it up in the air. But this will be the end of the first part. This will be a two-part video on this. So thanks for watching. We're done with this for the day.